Let's get started with the finer points of entity searching. First, let's get acclimated to our surroundings. We begin in the search box. This is where your query goes. And we're done. Shortest video ever. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. It's fun to have fun. Let's move left to right as we start in the search box. Uh, I wanted to get some data in here just so we have something pretty to look at while we're learning. I decided to go with our old friend Quad8 AKA Google. Moving across the screen, we see things like the time frame adjustment where you can adjust things by hour, minute, day, month, whatever you want. The next button is the save search, which will save your life. If you have a common search that you run all the time, this is the place to save that search and to bring those searches back up, just like you see some of mine in here, that is your saved search and history. Very, very important. Uh, there's also a button for creating detections. Don't worry, we're not covering that one in this video, but there will be a video for that very, very shortly. And finally, we have the settings button, which you can change all manner of things in here, how many events you get back, uh, histogram settings. My favorite thing, and big shout out to Greg on the Insight team, I love the IQL editor size. That is how many lines of space you get to work with. Our default is one, you can do three, or you can do 20. That's for those of you that like to write those monster queries. I love this function. Thank you so much, Greg. Moving back to the search results for Google, let's quickly define entity versus event search. An entity search is useful for when you have an indicator, but you aren't quite sure what you're looking at just yet. An entity search will provide a summary of things like the overall traffic we see, passive info about the entity, and additional enrichment data. As we can see here, we've got a ton of information about traffic going to that 8.8.8.8 address. For instance, we see uh, some overall traffic by device, traffic by service. I wouldn't be surprised if we have quite a bit of DNS traffic in there. If we go and click on one of these source devices, it brings up our entity pane with a wide assortment of information. Things like passive DNS info, who is information, some virus toll information. Basically, we throw the whole kitchen sink at you. Useful to get a first high level glance at the nature of traffic around an entity. Congratulations, you just completed your first entity search with Insight. You feel like a ninja yet? Don't worry, you will. Now we're gonna move on to the real good stuff, event searching. Now let's take that very high level entity search and go a little deeper into the weeds and turn it into an event search. We're gonna gather all of the events that have anything to do with that quad eight address indicator that we've been working with. Let's get started. You may be asking, how do we get deeper in the weeds? Simple, we're gonna add and IP equals in front of that quad eight address and presto, we have events. Our query language is the Insight Query Language or IQL. Any SQL users watching this video will find this syntax familiar as IQL follows the basic premise of any query language. I wanna point out some of the different color changes as I type my query. Uh, you could see that the actual address is red and the equals is blue. These will be familiar to those of you who have coded before because our search functions much like an IDE or integrated development environment. That means we have things like syntax coloring, new lines, comments, and autocomplete. For instance, if you type in open parentheses or quote, the closing automatically appears in the search box. Much like my request for a pony at Christmas time, white space is completely ignored, but you can add tabs for clarity. We can also use standard query operators like, well, like, as well as and, or, not, not in, etc. You'll be expected to remember each and every one of these at all times. Again, kidding, I'm such a prankster. Our IQL reference guide in the documentation is a fantastic resource that you can and should use frequently, accessed right up here in the help and documentation menu. A quick word on the amount of events that Insight will return. As you can see here in this query, we have about a little over half a million events. However, we're only ever gonna return 10,000 that you'll have access to in the UI. But, and this is important and something I wish I would have learned as a baby analyst, you should never, 
need to scroll through 10,000 events. If you've got that many events and you don't need them all, you can and should refine your search to narrow things down. It's a lot like baking a turkey when that little timer thingy pops up and you're ready to eat. It is a real pain and probably rude in most cultures, illegal in others, just to grab the entire turkey and start chowing down. I mean, I totally can do it if you dared me. I'm no chicken. But that meal is going to be a lot more manageable if you carve that sucker up into the little pieces that you really want. That's what I'm talking about when I talk about paring down your searches. Now that we've got our little bits of turkey, aka the data, let's go find the good stuff, the dark meat, because that is the best. What does it mean to carve up your data? It means asking questions of that data. Let's find out who is talking to 8.8.8.8. Let's go with desk.ip equals 8.8.8.8. And I want to find out what the source IPs are but I want it in a very digestible format right in front of me. So we use the all powerful group by source dot IP. And that is going to return all of the IP addresses that we're talking outbound to 8.8.8. .8 Here in our demo environment, we've utilized the group by transform to see three hosts are talking to that quad eight address. Some other cool tricks that we can use to gain a little quick slice of that data or say we want to know what protocols are being used so we will just do by oh look at that autocomplete event type and that is going to return what types of events we're seeing in that data so we see we have some dns records and we have some flow records the other cool part is doing a group by but looking at the data over time so another great one is day and timestamp. This is going to give us a great view over multiple days of what that traffic looked like to that address. Now for the operator fun. It's like wielding a scalpel only now you know what you're doing and nobody calls the cops. We can now do all of the classics like and, in, and not in. Here we're looking at the DNS query types that return either an A or a quad A record. Not used to seeing quad A's? Fun fact, that is the actual DNS record for an IPv6 address. I am full of fun, fun facts. All right, we've covered how to look at a thing, how to ask questions of that thing using a variety of methods to carve out what you want to know. A kinder, gentler kind of interrogation. Now let's get into analyzing the actual records. We've gotten an overview of an entity, gathered all the events around that entity, now it's time to pivot within those events to help build some all important context. What do I mean by pivot? Pivot is speed. Pivot is efficiency. Imagine having to walk around a mall. You pass by the store you need, and instead of just rotating on your heel and going right back into the store, you walk all the way down the hallway in a big wide arch just to go back the way you came. Certainly not efficient certainly not speedy, and you would be an absolute weirdo. Where do we go from the place we're at to a different place quickly and efficiently? We pivot. Here is where we go from looking at XIP for X reasons to seeing anything that thing talked to, how they were talking, and what they were talking about. Pivoting is one of my favorite subjects. I can't wait to get into it, so let's do it. We begin our conversation on pivoting in our handy dandy entity panel. This is your first step to making sense of the information you carved out in our previous steps. One panel, multiple views, depending on the asset type. So if we left click on an internal host, we have all sorts of information to help keep us busy. Things like Kerberos records, DHCP leases, and software seen associated with that particular IP address. Now, if we left click on an external host, we see things like who is records, virus total, and passive DNS results. While left clicking an entity gets the entity panel we talked about earlier, right clicking gets the context menu. From this menu, you get a host of enhanced functionality, such as the ability to add to the current search, reset the current search, open search in a new tab, and messing with some time-based options. I'm gonna go ahead and do a new tab 
for this dot 200 address. New tabs are especially useful for tracking your way down a rabbit hole of an investigation so we don't get lost and lose our collective minds. We all know if you're not working in more than 200 tabs, you're not really working. <laughs> we'll do a simple group by to see what this IP was talking to. And we're going to make sure that we only get external communications. And presto, we have all of the destination IPs that that dot 200 address had been talking to. Now for something really fun. It's, okay, it's not fun per se, but it's darn useful. How often have any of us gotten a link or a list from some Intel feed or a colleague filled with a ton of indicators and told to just go find them? Well, we've got a solution for that. It's called the bulk uploader tool. You can bring up the bulk uploader tool by right clicking in the search box like so. Let's take all of these destination IPs and put them in one big list so we're able to search all of them all at once. Super convenient and this is a super easy thing to do. Click and drag, control C, right click in the search box, bulk add indicators from text, control V, parse those indicators. We're going to parse all of these as dest.ip. I've changed all of them to dest.ip. Now we're going to add those indicators. And look at that. They all appear up here in the search head. So we're going to repeat the same query that we did in step one. Only now we're looking at multiple internal hosts at once. And there we go. That is the bulk upload tool in a nutshell. We can use this tool to find things like common patterns in traffic, high volume patterns in traffic, and suspicious domains or IPs in the traffic.